Hey, this is Presh Tullwalker. Here's a really nice geometry problem. Start with the line segment AB. Construct the arc BC centered at A and construct the arc AC centered at B. Let O be the midpoint of AB. Construct a semicircle with the diameter AO and another semicircle with the diameter OB. Let each semicircle have a radius that's equal to 1. Now we construct a circle that's tangent to all of the things we just constructed. So it's tangent to each of the arcs AC and BC, and it's tangent to the two semicircles. The question is, in this gothic window type shape, what is the radius of this inscribed circle? Pause the video if you'd like to give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve this problem. In order to solve this problem, I want to quickly review one of my favorite concepts. If two circles are tangent, their centers and the tangent point are collinear. So let's say we have a circle A and a circle B and a tangent point T. We want to show that ATB is a straight line segment or that ATB is equal to 180 degrees. So here's how we're going to do that. We will draw the tangent line that goes through the point T. Because this is a tangent line, AT and the tangent line will be perpendicular. We can do the same thing for circle B. BT will be perpendicular to the tangent line, so we have a right angle over here. So now we have two right angles, so ATB is equal to 90 plus 90, which equals 180 degrees. In other words, ATB is a straight line segment, and AT and B are collinear. This is true not only for externally tangent circles, but it's true for internally tangent circles too. So we'll use this principle to solve the problem. So let's return to the original problem, and I want to give credit to where I saw the solution. So let's connect the center of the inscribed circle to the point O. Let's say that this distance is H. Now, this semicircle and the inscribed circle are tangent to each other, so their centers and the tangent point will be collinear. So let's connect the centers and the tangent point. The semicircle has a radius equal to 1, and this inscribed circle has a radius that's equal to r. We now have a triangle here, and we're going to show that it's a right angle at the point O. How do we do that? Well, notice that we can construct a same sort of triangle on the other side of the figure. So here we have a semicircle, and it's tangent to this inscribed circle, so let's connect the two centers and the tangent point. We will have lengths of 1 and r, and now this semicircle also has a radius that's equal to 1. So this triangle is exactly a mirror image of the other triangle, so these two triangles are congruent to each other, and therefore we will have this 180 degree angle divided into two 90 degree right angles. So now if we focus on just one of these triangles, we must have since we have a right triangle, 8 squared plus 1 squared is equal to the square of 1 plus r. Let's continue the construction. Now the arc BC, which is a circle centered at A, is tangent to this inscribed circle. So these are internally tangent circles. So the tangent point and the centers of the circle will be collinear. So A is a center, we have the center of the inscribed circle, and we have the tangent point. So let's go ahead and construct that line segment. Now we want to figure out the lengths of this line segment, so we'll first figure out the radius of the large circle. So let's look at AB. We know that it's formed by two semicircles, where each semicircle has a radius that's equal to 1. So this length will be 1, this length will be 1, and the entire distance AB will be equal to 4. So then if we rotate this radius, we will see that this line segment is also a radius, and so its entire length will be equal to 4. Now if we subtract out the radius of the inscribed circle, the remaining length will be equal to 4 minus r. We now have another right triangle, and therefore we will have h squared plus 2 squared is equal to the square of 4 minus r. All that remains is to solve for r. So let's focus on these equations. Now the nice thing about this system of equations is we don't have to solve for h and r. 
we have an h squared in both equations, so we can just eliminate the h variable and solve directly for r. So let's subtract the second equation from the first equation. The h squared variables will cancel out. So we're left with an equation that's only in the variable r. We have 1 squared minus 2 squared is equal to the square of 1 plus r minus the square of 4 minus r. 1 squared is equal to 1. 2 squared is equal to 4. We then expand each binomial. The square of 1 plus r is 1 plus 2r plus r squared, and the square of 4 minus r is 16 minus 8r plus r squared. Now we do some simplification, and the left-hand side is negative 3, and the right-hand side is minus 15 plus 10r. We therefore get that r is equal to 1.2 or 6 over 5. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.